So today, I thought I was going to be able to do this big, huge, great plug, because, you know, we've had these wonderful t-shirts. I was going to give you my OOTD. Um, if you don't know what that means, that's the outfit of the day. But we just sold out. I just got a word that we just sold out of all of our t-shirts. Um, so thank you for wearing those. If you've bought one, yes, it's good stuff. You guys love Kingwood. You represent, represent the community. Just remember, if you're wearing it out, going out to eat, um, tip big, okay? Let them know that they're loved. <laughs> hey, Pastor Jay is actually on his way home. Um, just here in a few minutes, he'll be driving from Texas. He's dropping Tyler off this morning. So you guys keep him in your prayers. He'll be headed back. And then next week, he will be back in the pulpit. We're so excited about that. And he will be closing out our sermon series of Movement of Hope. But I have good news for you. We don't have to wait till next week. He actually left us a message to kick off our series um, part four today. Good morning, Kingwood Church. I'm Jay West, the lead pastor here at Kingwood. You don't have to live very long to figure out that life is a journey, not a sprint. We reach our potential one step at a time, not taking giant steps. When we follow God one step at a time, what He is able to do in our lives is nothing short of a miracle. I know this is true because I'm one of those miracles. When I was in high school, my principal planted a seed of hope in me and encouraged me to follow God's call on my life and to go to college to train. That was a strange thought to me because I was the only person in my family who had ever attended college. God used my high school principal to encourage me to take that step and it changed my life. That's what it means to be a movement of hope empowering everyone to take their next step, which is what we're talking about this morning. Imagine if Pastor Jay's principal did not encourage him to go to Bible college. Just think about that, how big of a next step that was, not just for him in his personal life, but for us as a church. God knew that he had potential. God had created him for a purpose and a potential. And somebody in his life, like a principal, saw that and encouraged him to follow God. What an incredible story. Um, I want to take you back for just a moment to February 23 of 2020. We had just kicked off a brand new vision st uh, series Pastor Jay was laying out, here's why I believe God has purposed Kingwood Church in this moment and this time. He said, we have a vision. This is where we find out who we are as a church. And it was so good. If you were there um, that morning, let me see your hand. If you were there, you remember him rolling that out. If you're online, give us some thumbs up. Um, it was such a good morning. It was just so incredible. I remember um, just him laying out step by step. Here's what we're going to do. And it was just so encouraging. And he asked these three questions. If, you, uh, if you'll think back for a minute of these three questions that he asked us. He said, do you think that Kingwood Church has reached our full potential? Do you think that Kingwood Church, that we as a church, has reached our full potential? And then number two, he said, do you think the impact that we are making is what God had in mind when he formed this church, or do we have more potential that has not yet been reached? And then number three, he made it personal. He said, what about you? Have you reached your full potential yet? And of course, we all said no. We knew that God still had so much for us as a church, for us as individuals. God was not done with us in 2020. And I remember that Sunday just being so full of hope and feeling so empowered and so excited about what was coming next for Kingwood Church. I left and I went home and I just started laying out some ideas. What can we do as a church? What are some ways that we can be a movement of hope? What are some ways that we can reach our community? How are some ways that we can better build life groups at Kingwood Church? How can we empower people to take their next step? And I thought to myself, wow, it can't get better than this. But little did we know in February of 2020 that a world pandemic was just right around the corner. I, 
I mean, maybe some of you knew. I had no clue. I was very naive. I was like, mm, this is America. This is the United States of America. A virus is not going to stop us. It's not going to slow us down. We had no clue. And in early March, we were scheduled to meet in person. Pastor Jay, Pastor Jeremy, Pastor Jason, and I, we used to do a, a weekly meeting where we talked about service and we did plans. And Pastor Jeremy texted us about 10 minutes before he was supposed to get there. And he said, hey, I'm not feeling that great. Um, you know, I, I think it's just a sinus infection. But I just wanted to call you before I came to the office because, you know, we've heard rumors of, of this virus. And I just want to make sure y'all are okay. Do you want me to stay home? Do you want me to call in? What you? And we're like, no, of course not. That's ridiculous. Are you serious? It's just a little sinus infection. Come on to work. So he came, and um, we actually met two or three times that week. And long story short, Pastor Jeremy did end up being COVID positive. Even after he went to the doctor and the doctor said, eh, it's not COVID, it's not here yet, he didn't even test him. But he went to the doctor, I don't remember how many times, two or three times, and then finally they tested him. And he and Justin, our worship, uh, another worship leader, were some of the first two in our church, I think, that had tested positive that we knew of for COVID. And I remember those, those next following few weeks. We had just talked about the vision. We were ready to go. And then all of a sudden, it just felt like we all just froze. We stopped in time. Like we went from being empowered to full of hope to just frozen. You know, fear can cause you to become stuck. It could cause you to do even worse, to move backwards. We sang that song, I'm not going back. I'm moving forward. But how many of you know the reality is when you're facing fear, it's hard. You know, we have, we, if you study psychology, we each as humans have this fight, flight, or freeze survival mechanism built inside of us. And when something traumatic or something big negatively impacts us, we just, we either stop, we freeze, or we fight, we fight against it. Or we flight, we run away. And for me, I felt like I got stuck. I felt like I just froze. I'm like, what do you mean? This is, um, you know, we just, we had such a powerful service just a few weeks ago. God's doing something. So after two years, two and a half years of lots of change, can you believe we've come a long way? And in that moment, we didn't stop. We felt like it. I felt like it. I wanted to. A lot of you probably wanted to. After losing loved ones, I lost two uncles and a grandmother. We've lost church members. We lost friends. But we're still here. God is still not done with us. There is still potential. We are still here for a purpose. No matter what circumstances look like, God still has a purpose for us. It may look different. It might even feel different at times. And you know, some of you may have even said to yourself, church is just not the way it used to be. But can I tell you this morning, purpose and potential do not change because of circumstances. Purpose and potential, your purpose, my purpose, our purpose as a church does not change because of our circumstances. God still has his hand on Kingwood Church. And our vision is still the same. It's to be a movement of hope in Shelby County and beyond. So the first one you guys heard from Pastor Jeremy, helping people meet God. And then you heard from Pastor Mark, helping people find purpose... And then last week you heard from Pastor Jason, living the belief that anyone can find Jesus. And then this week we're talking about empowering everyone to take their next step. Let's read Galatians 5, 25 together. It says, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. You know, I want to challenge us today to live by the Spirit. 
to keep in step with the Spirit of God. So how do we do that when things may look impossible in our personal situations? You may, right now, even in your personal life, be going through a really dark season. You may not be able to see your way forward. You see, this is a church It's few, it's, it's full of people. It's, it's full of flesh and bones. And as human beings, we have our struggles. We each have a story that we are walking through right now. We have walked through or we will be walking through in the future. We each have our own struggles and disappointments that we could talk about today. And oftentimes, we feel like we cannot take our next step. And you know what? We're right. You're right. We cannot on our own. We need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit living and working in us. Because He is our way maker. He's the miracle you're looking for. If you feel like you're in a dark season, He's the light. That's what the promise of the Holy Spirit is there for, is to help us, to empower us to continue this journey, to empower us to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. You know, God has given us the authority and power to live this life and taking our next step. That's what empower means. It means to give authority or legal power to. And if you have the Holy Spirit living and working in your life, you have been given the authority to do what you need in this life, to fulfill your purpose, and to fulfill your full potential. I'm reminded of a story that's found in Ezekiel. I read it the first time that I was able to get up here and preach this fourth point of our vision And I'm going to read it again today because I just couldn't, you know, I wanted to freshen up the sermon and I did a little bit. I I, I got in there and I prayed and I asked God, I want a new word for today. But I just could not get away from this scripture. This scripture is just so powerful. Let's read it together. A little backstory, real quick. This um, This was a vision that God gave to the prophet Ezekiel about reconciliation of Israel to the promise. God had given them a promised land. He had said, here it is, it's yours. And yet they stopped because of fear. They did not fulfill their purpose. And so God gave Ezekiel this vision. It says this, The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and he set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, And I saw a great many of bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone by bone. Kingwood Church, I want to speak life to you today. I want to speak life. Pastor Jay, just like his principal, spoke life into him. He saw the potential that he can use. I want to speak that into somebody's life this morning. You still have a next step. You have potential. If you're still living and breathing in this earth, you still have potential to feel. We've got to keep speaking that to ourselves. You know, there's days that I've gone over the past two and a half years And I felt like every morning I get up, okay, it's the same cycle. I'm back to the same place. You know what? I get up, I speak life into myself, and I make it through. I keep taking the steps. I've had to do that so many times over the past couple of years. And sometimes we have to do that over and over and over again. Sometimes you have to wake up 
and you have to say, okay, self, it's time to live today. I have potential. I have purpose. You know, the next generation needs us to do that. They are counting on us. I, um, I was able to go with the 20s a couple of weeks, well, last week. I, that's why I wasn't here on Sunday. I kind of snuck in on the 20s group because I'm close to their age. <laughs> I think I am um, in a lot of ways. Um, but I just love being around them. They are so hungry to find God's purpose. They're counting on us to continue to walk this out, to stay strong, to, to live our potential. I remember, um, Kristen, I, I remember we were in Master's Commission together when we were in our 20s. I remember people that were older than me and people that were core to the church, the, the prayer team, the altar workers, the Sunday school teachers, they spoke life to me. I, I think it was uh, Mary Kahn's actually S Sunday school group, if you guys know her. They would take up an offering every week for us crazy 20-year-olds that wanted to do a Bible study down in Montevallo, Alabama. They believed in us. That Sunday school class could have said, you know what, we're, this is our church. We, we're going to do it our way. We're going to just eat together. We're going to just take care of our people. But instead, they believed in us 20-year-olds. They believed in the next generation enough to invest in us, to spend time with us. They prayed for us. They were faithful to pray for us. And I can't imagine what life would be like without them. We definitely, I probably wouldn't be here. I know Pastor Jason wouldn't be here. He needed a lot of prayer. <laughs> I'm so grateful that Kingwood Church, 20 years ago, planted the seeds and kept moving and taking their next steps. We've got to do that for the next generations. September 8th, if you're a 20-year-old in here, 20-something in here, or if you feel like you're 20-something in here, you can show up. They have a service that's launching on September 8th, right, Emily? Thursday night. If you're ready to take that next step, you say, look, I want to be surrounded by people my age that are on the same journey as me. Come to the 20s life. They have worship. They pray for each other. They build community. It's so incredible. It's a great place to take your next step if you're in your 20s. Our leaders still need to know that they're needed. We need to be encouraged to lead with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. You know, as a leader, sometimes we get stuck in all the stuff we got to do. But I'm always reminded it's not by my might, it's not by my power, but it's by the Holy Spirit. And then last but not least, people in our community are counting on us. Our community and around the world needs to know that at any circumstance that God will make a way. It may not look like it did in the past. It may not be what we expected. But you can be sure that God is still with us. One of the ways that we can help empower you um, at Kingwood Church is just is, is through life groups. Life groups will be launching here on September 11th. If you've not connected at Kingwood Church, you can simply go to the website. We have a ton of next steps that we want to do to help to help give you some um, some tools to help you develop your relationship with Jesus, to help you build a community, your prayer life. We have an incredible new, I'm so excited about this one, a new one launching that is building a healthy prayer life. So on September 11th, if you're here at Kingwood Church, one of the ways that you want to just take your next step, just check those life groups out. That might be exactly what all God's asking you to do. See, we're not called to just survive. We're called to thrive. 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, of love, and of self-discipline. That's not just surviving. That's thriving. Every one of us in here has a next step. 
as long as you've not fulfilled your potential. Let's read Galatians 5.25 again. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. You know, our modern-day Pentecostal movement is credited to William Seymour. If you've ever heard that name, it's one of my biggest heroes. He is the reason that we exist today at Kingwood Church. I talked about him two and a half years ago as well when we talked about empowering everyone to take a next step. He is the reason that churches like Kingwood exist. He went through um, a time where African Americans were not welcome in the classroom. He felt the call of God on his life. He wanted to preach. He wanted to teach the gospel. He wanted to reach people. But he was made to sit in a hallway outside of a classroom and just barely listen. But he didn't let that stop him. He was an ordained minister. He was a son of freed slaves. And he lived in a very difficult time. But because of his willingness to continue to move forward, to continue to take his next step, to continue to find out, okay, I'm going to wake up today. Do you think it was easy for him? Have, have you ever felt like you have something to do, but people are stopping you? If you've ever been in that place where you feel like there's, you know, everywhere I turn, there's an obstacle, I can't imagine putting myself in his shoes how it feels to want to be who God called you to be. This is who I believe God's speaking to me this, to be. This is, this is who I believe God has, has created me to be. But everywhere he turned, even the people that was supposed to be encouraging him, even his brothers and sisters in Jesus were putting up obstacles for him. But he's credited to be responsible for the modern-day Pentecostal, another movement of hope. That's not what it was. It was a movement of hope that changed the world. It changed how we do church. It changed how people listen to the Holy Spirit. What kind of church would we be in the future? Think about that for me with me for just a second. What would Kingwood Church look like in the future if we refuse to now, we refuse to let obstacles stop us? What would we look like? It's huge. I'm telling you, it's huge. I think that we're probably even just a drop in the bucket of what God has planned for us. We've been through some incredible seasons at Kingwood. We have incredible worship services. We've done the most amazing missions trips. We have a top-notch kids ministry. We have turned out disciples that are serving Jesus, that are loving their families, they're raising their kids in church and, and teaching them the Bible. Imagine what more we could do if we continue to press forward and we continue to take those next steps as a church. So today I want to ask you three things. Ask God personally, what is my next step? Maybe today it's just starting a relationship with Jesus for the first time. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, I don't know what that next step is because I don't know who Jesus is. You know, your next step could just be saying, you know what, I'll, I'm ready to start a relationship with Jesus. Or maybe it's seeking counsel and taking time for your mental health. Maybe it's just surrounding yourself with other believers, like going to a life group or a 20-something. Or, or maybe it's plugging your kids into um, Wednesday night youth. Maybe your next step for a family is gathering that support that you need for a family structure. We can't do it alone. We cannot raise our kids alone. And I'm telling you, I don't know what I would do without 
youth service for my kids where they can connect and have their own life group leaders and people that love them and pour into them. Number two, I want you to take a minute today and just identify some of your obstacles. Maybe, maybe you just need to take, take time to recognize what are those obstacles that are standing in your way and causing you fear. What are some of the things that seem impossible and what disappointments are keeping you personally from taking your next step? If we just keep reliving the same cycle of being stuck over and over and over again and feeling like you're not making it, you're not able to take a step, a lot of times it's because we're not able to identify what that specific obstacle is. When you identify your fears and your hurts, the things that cause you pain, you can begin to let God heal you. And then you're able to do, number three, let God remind you that he's empowered you. So once you've identified those obstacles, let God remind you that he has empowered you. It's time to keep moving forward this morning, Kingwood Church. It's time. Like I said before, things may not look the same as it did to you. It doesn't to me and Kristen. I can tell you, we used to get up here every week and we'd do human videos and dramas. And, you know, that's how we presented the gospel. Our lives changed. Things don't always stay the same. We grow, we move, time changes. God's purpose didn't change for us, though. I want to read one of my favorite scriptures to you this morning, and I know that Pastor Jay has read it to you as well several times. It's found in Isaiah 43. It says, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. And when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. As we get ready to go back into this last song in worship, Would you stand with me this morning? If you're in person or online, if you're online, you can just close your eyes for just a minute. Can we all just take a moment? We recognize that God is here with us. Take a minute to connect with God in this moment. Can we just say to him today, God, I surrender to you. Let God speak to you right where you are this morning. I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every voice that can hear this morning or later on in the week. God, speak to their hearts. Encourage them. Let them know that you are with them and that you are for them and that they still have potential and purpose to keep moving forward. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.